Morning, welcome to it. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. You are live with Graham Richards and the team from Expresso. Thank you so much for keeping it locked. Ah, we're going to do something special today. I can feel it in my bones. And I know we're all about that positive energy, about making the right choices, about changing the world for the better around us. But I'm going to take the pressure off this morning and say, let's just cook. Let's just get in the kitchen, do something simple and make a healthy choice in our own lives. And it's all about healthy choices in the kitchen this morning. For all of you who have already started to run out of ideas of what to make for breakfast, lunch and and supper, stay tuned. We have got you covered this morning. How does this sound? A grilled tuna and avocado chili salsa. Mm -hmm. Then we've got a sump and bean summery salad. Good that morning. Take well. care of lunch. And we have got toasted sourdough with tossed greens and tuna. We've got your proteins. we got your greens. we got you covered this morning. So we're going to have a lot of fun in the kitchen and, of course, squeeze in a lot of other vitally important news as well and keep you prepped for the day ahead. But how can you not feel good when you see a face like this every Good morning. Good morning, Kutle. <laughs> good morning to you, G. A very good morning to you, South Africa. It's the start of a brand new Tuesday morning, and you know we love reaching out to you on our social media platforms to get the conversation flowing and going. And today, it's about something that's truly important, and I'm sure that has affected a number of people across the globe. It's Stroke Awareness Week, and we've got the professionals to answer all of your questions. Do you have any questions about having a stroke? Hashtag Expresso show. Perhaps you've experienced it yourself or a family member has experienced it yourself or you have questions such as how do you prevent it from happening to you or if it does happen, how can you or what can you do to make yourself you know, feel a little better or to understand it a little better. Uh, so make sure to keep the conversation going and flowing using the hashtag Expresso show. But now it's time to get the ball rolling starting off with those news uh, headlines. Here's G. Thanks so much, Kutle. Let's start here in South Africa, where power utility giant ESCOM has now ban uh, begun bulk electricity interruptions at Dr. Beos Nodia local municipality in the Eastern Cape due to unpaid debt. The embattled municipality currently owes ESCOM 117 million rand. ESCOM says the municipality breached its payment obligation, thus compromising the power utility's ability to continue the national supply of electricity on a financial sustainable basis. So in a 24-hour cycle, various areas in the municipality municipality will now have power cuts for more than six hours. This could possibly double to 12 hours next week. Then the privately owned SA Airlink has officially changed its name to Airlink. This as the company wishes to put distance between itself and its former partner of more than 20 years, SA Airways. Now, Airlink terminated its franchise agreement with the SAA when it went into business rescue and failed to pay some 700 million rand of revenue for tickets issued on flights flown by Airlink. Airlink has since formed partnerships with large international airlines like Qatar Airways, Emirates, British Airways, KLM, Air France and United. Casting a wider gaze on the international front, Libya's state oil company has announced the reopening of the last major oil field under its control. That's just days after the country's warring parties agreed on a ceasefire deal. The National Oil Corporation has now ended all the closures of oil fields and ports brought on by a month-long blockade by forces loyal to Khalifa Haftar, the military commander based in eastern Libya. Now, Haftar's forces imposed the blockade in January when they were still besieging the capital Tripoli, Libya's economy is oil dependent. Now, with only nine days before the presidential election, a senior aide to President Donald Trump has conceded that the U.S. is not going to control the pandemic. Instead, the White House chief of staff, Mark Meadows, said COVID-19 could only be defeated by vaccines and therapeutics. More than 225,000 Americans have died since the pandemic began. And on Saturday alone, 83,718 new cases were recorded, just short of the record of 83,700. 157 reported on Friday. So previously, the highest number of reported infections in a single day was just 77,362, and that was back on the 16th of July.
Now, uh, news of a book on inspirational black female scientists. This comes in the wake of Saturday's exciting event concerning the new Miss South Africa. Comes news of further women empowerment and progress. A book on the inspirational stories of 14 as incredible South African women. Holding the Knife's Edge, Journeys of Black Female Scientists was penned by Dr. Tato Motlame and Dr. Ivodio Setati, a postdoctoral fellow and chief scientist respectively in the SA Grape and Vine Research Institute of Stellenbosch University's Faculty of Agri-Sciences. The title refers to a Tswana and Seperi proverb, which means a mother holds the sharp end of the knife. I love that. And the authors say it highlights the commitment and effort that women and mothers put in to ensure the success of their children. And the stories of these phenomenal women embody that proverb undoubtedly. The end result is the first of its kind in Africa and a must read. And it features the likes of Professors Mamukheti Pakeng, the Vice Chancellor of UCT, Tebelo Nyokong from Rhodes University, Matain Tsai Diale from Pretoria, Knox Makunga from Stellenbosch University, and Koza Glova from the University of KZN, Rafilwe Nancy Paswana Mafuya from Northwest University, Salomi Maswime from UCT, and Doctors Patients Mtunzi Kufa and Nomusa Dlamini and Rapela Mapanga of the CSIR. So congratulations to all of the ladies, and it seems like a must read and inspirational way to kickstart our day this morning. That's where we leave our news for now. Let's get into those sporting headlines. Let's start with rugby news and not the best news. Springbok and Stormers captain Sia Khaleesi will be out with injury for two to three weeks. That was after sustaining a leg injury in their Super Rugby Unlocked clash against the Pumas on Friday. Khaleesi will miss his team's big clash against the Bulls on Saturday coming. Yesterday it was also confirmed that Peter Steph Dutoy will not be playing any rugby this year. That was after picking up a serious leg injury back in March. On to netball. The Eastern Cape Allos were crowned Netball League Division B champions. That was after beating the Kings uh, King Down uh, Queens in 35-31 uh, yesterday in a tight encounter. The Queens gave the game away in that final quarter after an impressive performance in their first appearance in the tournament. The promotion and relegation match between the Allos and Kingdom Stars will take place this uh, today, in fact, at 5 p.m. On to football news. Bafana Bafana head coach Molefi Nseki named his 25-man squad to play Sao Tome in November in the Cameroon 2022 AFCON qualifiers. The first match will be played at the Moses Mabida Stadium. That's on the 13th of November at 7 p.m. And then three days later, they'll play their away match at 5 p.m. Veteran goalkeeper Tumalan Kune will make his return to the squad. And staying with footballing news, but slightly further afield, South Korean footballer Son Hyung Ming, assisted by Harry Kane, secured a 1-0 win for Tottenham Hotspur against Burnley. That was in the Premier League at Turf Moor late last night. So Captain Harry Kane has now been directly involved in 13 goals this season. Season. What a pairing they're proving to be. This has been the most ever recorded by a player in Tottenham's first six EPL games of a season with five goals and eight assists to boot. Another fixture from last night, West Brom, they drew one all with Brighton. Then on to crickets in the IPL, the Kings 11 Punjab claimed an eight wicket win over the Kolkata Knight Riders. The Indian Premier League continued last night with action of plenty with the Kings 11 claiming their fifth consecutive victory that was after beating the Knight Riders by eight wickets at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium. Indian cricket keeper Mike Deep Singh, 66 from 56, and Chris Gale of the West Indies, who's been on great form, smashing 51 from 29 to guide the Kings 11 to a pretty comfortable win in the end. There'll be one IPL fixture today, and that's the Sunrisers Hyderabad taking on the Delhi Capitals at 4 p.m. And now, finally, tennis star Rafa Nadal has swapped the tennis rackets for golf clubs and finished in sixth place in the Balleric Golf Pro AM Championships in his hometown of Mallorca in Spain. So the world's uh, number Number two came in 10 shots behind the winner after the three-day tournament, which is a pretty impressive feat. Natal will return to the tennis court though on Monday for the Paris Masters, and I'm sure still riding high after his success in France. Um, and that's where we leave our sport for now. Let's get our first look at today's weather.
Let's get into it with your sunrise pictures. We have received a heightened number of responses to your sunrise pictures. Thank you so much. Hashtag, we love seeing it. We start off with Fortunate Taylor, who shared hers from Durban. Expect partly cloudy conditions with a low of 21 and a high of 25 degrees. Ronaldo Ricketts captured this fiery sunrise in the city of gold, Johannesburg. You will enjoy a mostly sunny day with temperatures reaching a high of 29 degrees. Thank you so much for sharing your sunrise pictures. Please continue to share them on our social media platforms and use the hashtag Expresso Show. Trust me, I will show them live on the show. We love seeing them. Now, alarming news emerged yesterday with the UN Climate Change Agency saying that while Africa is already being ravaged by floods, droughts, cyclones, warmer weather conditions and a desert locust invasion, the worst is yet to come. The agency says warming temperatures are slashing crop fields, which is devastating stating news as agriculture is the backbone of Africa's economy. This will have a serious impact on the continent's food security, economy and health systems. The World Meteorological Organization added that crop fields have already shrunk by between 8 and 13 percent in some African countries due to rising temperatures, while the number of people suffering from hunger has increased by about 45 percent. Please do spare a thought for our uh, brothers and sisters who are out there facing this crisis and just keep them in your prayers and hope for a better future. Now, warm temperatures are expected on Tuesday here in South Africa, but thunder showers lurk in some provinces, starting off at Polokwane with a maximum of 29 degrees. Bombela, your temperatures range from 17, reaching a high of 30. Pretoria, it's a mostly sunny one with a maximum of 31 degrees. Johannesburg, 17, 29. Mahikeng, 20. 33 and Klerksdorp 25% chance of rain reaching a maximum of 32 degrees. Kimberley 21-34 do expect 40% chance of rain as well. Uh, it's some showers for Bloemfontein but will reach a high of 32 degrees. Richards Bay do make sure to stay hydrated as well because the sun is out at 32 degrees. Peter Marisburg 17-30 are your temperatures. So far it seems like it's very warm temperatures across the country. At Deben 21-25. Tata it's a mostly sunny day with a maximum of 32 degrees. But do not leave your umbrellas behind because 25% chance of rain is to be expected. East London, 1927. Cradock, 1436. The friendly city and the friendly people of Port Elizabeth will enjoy sunny temperatures at a maximum of 25 degrees. George, 1323. The mother city, Cape Town, um, 1521, Vusta 1029 and Sutherland starts off the day at a low of 7 but will reach an afternoon temperature of 27 degrees. A sunny day in Uppington indeed with a maximum of 37 degrees. Now that was the uh, 6 o'clock weather round up. We'll have another look at the top of the hour. Remember, whichever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather, make sure to have yourselves a feel good kind of day. And think about some of that sunblock uh, if you're going to be out in the heat. But thanks so much for that, Kutla, and to everyone who sent through your beautiful sunrise pictures. That really does mean the world to us. So we are going to be obviously being f uh, very health focused today. Uh, we are getting into stroke awareness, having a vitally important conversation there about preventative methods. And a lot of that stems from our lifestyle. So we thought we'd add a little bit of extra weight behind that conversation with some incredibly healthy meals today. Help to inspire you. We've got a grilled tuna and avocado salad to be making um, in just a moment. Teresa Ulya is going to help us with that and then we'll maybe get into some of your birthdays as well. So happy birthday and if it is your birthday, we'll be celebrating with you in just a moment. So I'm chatting to Umalume Mosa here. He's owned a small clothing factory for years now and he's always inspired me with his success. But like a lot of businesses, this lockdown's hit him hard. So he spoke to his banker and they've put together a tailor-made relief solution for him to help his business and his people get through this. Making your bank your business partner, that's a habit worth keeping.
Oh yes, welcome back to it, your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express. So we're live on SABC3. It is that time. You hear yes. the tune, you're tuning and jamming into it. It's that time of the day where we wish you a lot, a lot, and our loyal viewers a very happy birthday. Of course, if it's your birthday today, you share it with Refilo Mweketi. Do you know Refilo Mweketi? I mean, Cooper, <laughs> yeah. Yep, she is better known uh, by her stage, uh, stage name, Fifi Cooper. She turns 29 years old today. Uh, a South African recording artist who's mostly popular in the hip-hop uh, sub-genre known as Motswako. And oh. uh, she's actually been named the queen of Motswako. Uh, you will recognize Kififi Cooper son. <laughs> uh, Fifi Cooper now has her very own record label, Mo Cooper Records, and we're very happy for her. Happy birthday, Fifi Cooper. Truly, truly exciting stuff for her. Go on and slay, queen. But now we get down to those videos that we love seeing coming from you. This one comes from Bonolo. Happy birthday, Bonolo, from Mohau, actually. Mm. Let's check it out. Good morning, Espresso team. So this morning, I really want to wish a very special, strong woman in my life a happy birthday. So, Bonolo, I know you hate Mondays and you can be a little dramatic, but we love it. So fam, we've got you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Go extra and be loud. But whom bamu di momo hawena? I did not expect wow. that. We didn't what see that coming. Voice, that beautiful was message. Stunning. And I'm guessing uh, if we can put the, the image of the video up on screen, Bonolo would be the one blowing the candles at the top yes, right. 100%. So that would be Bonolo. Bonolo. Uh, my favorite part was when Mohao said, Bonolo, Bonolo, you can be a little dramatic and then reaches for his dream. <laughs> love it. I love it. Love your work. Love happy it. birthday, Bonolo. And it's also very Tremaine's extra. birthday today. Yes. A very happy birthday to my one and only Auntie Tremaine. May you see many more years. Oh. I love you lots. This is from Hannah. Uh, Pungula. Uh, I would like to wish my uncle Spamanda Pungula an incredible happy birthday. I wish him success, peace and happiness. Lots of love from Nolutando Shazi. Happy birthday to you. Natania, a blessed birthday wish to our beautiful daughter Natania. Love you from mom, dad, Ishan, Jade, Angelique and Skylin. Oh, the whole family uh, in the mix there. And then it says here, I would like to wish my son Dante a very, very uh, incredibly stunning happy birthday. He turns 13 today. I pray that the Lord uh, continue to direct his path and bless him today and always. I love you. Uh, of course, this is from your family. I'm guessing that this is mm -hmm. from your mom Aww. who looks just like you. Wow, they, literally you can image see. Of you, the can see. you can Spitting see. You can see. Beautiful stuff. So listen, if you are celebrating your birthday or if you know a loved one that's celebrating their birthday and you want to put them on the show, send us a 15 second video Please. of yourself doing something special for them. Maybe sing for them. Wow. Uh, and send it to 071-640-6551 so that we can wish your loved ones a very happy birthday live on the show. We might even just give them a phone call, right? Uh, to make it an extra, extra special. Happy birthday to you. I don't know if that was extra special, guys. It was very special, though. It was very, very special. Uh, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back, Teresa Ulyet. Um, she's bringing a pop of freshness. I think with the beautiful coastline that we have, our affinity to the ocean, our love of nature and sustainably caught and farmed fish, we have developed a love affair with seafood, understandably so. And we get some of the best in the world. I think South Africa is blessed with an abundant and sprawling coastline. We want to be able to make the most of it, um, some of the richest and most diverse 
diverse sea life anywhere in the world and it's no surprise that as a result we have developed this love for seafood as part of our diet which is great because it's incredibly healthy and to uh, thanks to be well we've got your next fish fix sorted how does this sound delicious grilled tuna with avocado chili salsa uh -huh. we're gonna make the smart choice this morning and watch as we get schooled in all things seafood with Teresa Teresa welcome back hi thank you very much um, again I've got to pay you your dues when when you do bring a healthy dish in <laughs> it's super healthy okay so it Have balances moments, out all the yes. beautiful sweet treats that we make and I want to don't want to put you off making sweet treats here because okay. I do love no, those okay but this really is unbelievably <laughs> healthy yes and it's fresh fresh and lots of color and flavor you know when you see all this color there's a lot of nutrients there there's protein or veggies so a very very good one to make and oils and obviously oils, the be well canola yes. oil comes with the the cancer smart choice the smart seal of approval if you will um, so we know that this is an incredible a cholesterol fighting heart healthy addition to any meal Yes. Um, which is great. And this is going to be kind of the binder, I'm assuming, of our salsa that's going to bring everything together. Yes. We're also going to use it in our marinade. So it's the basis of our marinade. Ah. I've put a little bit in the bowl with some lime juice. You can use lemon juice as well, which we know also goes well with fish. A bit of salt and pepper. And then we've got our beautiful tuna Look at steaks those here. steaks. It's amazing. So you're going to pop that in and just leave it for about half an hour. So you and when you're marinating a fish, is it to break it down? Is it to flavor it? What's the idea? Mostly flavor. It's going to add flavor to the fish. And especially with something like tuna, it's got quite a robust flavor. Yeah. So you don't have to be shy with your marinade. Okay. I love tuna because it is, you know, when you say a tuna steak, you do get that really kind of, you get the, the chunk of flesh, which is great. But totally. that, it's that umami, yeah. that meatiness in tuna exactly. that really ticks all the boxes for me. Yeah. Huh? So while that's marinating, you can make your salsa. And yeah, like you said, lots of very fresh ingredients. So I'm going to put some avo in here. I'm going to cube up some tomatoes. An interesting thought. I mean, while we are all about sustainability when it comes to our seafood, that's something you know that we are constantly governed by the SASE green list on this yeah. show. And that's something that we very proudly advocate. But yeah. um, you know, right down to our canola oil, sustainability is important here. Um, yeah. All of the ingredients, everything that's going into this sustainably farmed, sustainably fished, exactly. sustainably caught, sustainably um, on, you know, managed on every single level, which is, yeah. is great to know. And I love yeah. the fact that Be Well is a proudly South African brand. Yeah. So we're supporting that. So as very, much as very important. Else. Yeah. You know, you've made the right choice with your Be Well, so make the right choice with your fish as well. And as you say, always just check that you using something from the green list. Okay, so our tomato and our avo has gone in. We've got some coriander. Again, a little bit of lime You can always juice. substitute the coriander for something that actually tastes <laughs> nice. That's fine. Um, no, I'm joking. I'm um, sorry. I know. Love a bit Do of coriander. Do you know coriander. that I've gone to the point that complete strangers <laughs> stop me in the street to talk about the, the pros and cons of coriander? Really? Like I've become yeah. the poster child. It's a thing now. For the raging debate around... <laughs> Coriander. <laughs> you could use parsley if you really want. Yes, to. you could. Yeah. Bit of chili Bit of basil, and basil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, just a note to self, okay? Um, I say this, and I really do say this to myself as much as I, uh, as a warning to you. When you're chopping the chili, watch touching your face Don't and touch your it. eyes. Yeah. I'll often use a, a pair of scissors and just like, and yeah. um, just and then to step away. Yeah, because really it's it's nasty, especially if you're going to be using little bird's eyes or like a hot oh, green chili or... Yeah, you don't um, want to go there. <laughs> I think I would think a, a habanero is probably a little too hot for a salsa. Um, well, it depends on your preferences, yeah. what you prefer. All right, so the salsa is all done, very quick and easy. And then what you want to do is you can cook your tuna over the coals on your griddle pan like we're doing today or under the grill. I love doing it on the braai because you get that beautiful smoky it's flavor sure. that goes with your creamy smooth salsa. And tuna, you don't want to overcook it. I mean, with any fish, you've got to be careful. But you want to do a high heat and, you know, just a couple of minutes per side. Because you only really need to sear it. It doesn't yeah. need to cook through exactly. it can entirely. Be rare or medium rare. Um, yeah, and you don't want to dry and crumbly. So high heat, just a couple of minutes. And then once it's done, you pop it on your plate, you top it with some salsa, and you can serve it with some beautiful seasonal veg or a salad. And this, I and think it's, it's ideally, because you've got this beautiful kind of slab of, of, of 
wonderfully textured tuna. You want in the salad, you want a bit of crunch. Yes. You, you need the texture, Definitely. the textural elements, if you yeah. will, to be able to go with that. But That's you're nice. getting one of the purest sources of protein in nature Absolutely. with tuna, which is so good for your body and it's so easily absorbed yeah. into your body. So make sure that you kind of add to that a super mix of, yes. of nutrients in your vegetables, the oils in your actual oil, your B well and your, your avocado. Yeah. You're getting all the aminos through this beautiful fresh popping salad on the side and a bit of zing. I think you need a bit of that, a bit of the lime, Absolutely. a bit of heat, something just to, to kind of add a bit of exactly. spice. And you can finish it off with a squeeze of lemon or a squeeze of lime and it's a beautiful summer dish. You know, mm. the weather's finally improving and this is perfect for a lunch or a dinner or to have at the braai, something a bit different. Yeah, I would love to do it on the braai. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. So you Stunning. can find this entire recipe on expressoshow.com. That's where we house all of our culinary inspiration. I am going to give this a little bit of a mm. taste um, <laughs> just to put our, yeah, and I can, I can feel the studio team like, ha ha, it's going to have <laughs> coriander. Um, yes, sure I will. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe this is a turning point. This is a tipping point you right here. You never know. You never know. Is that good? Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The, the tuna and the avocado a match are made in heaven. Beautiful. Not too much heat. Um, the coriander is fighting to take control there. <laughs> It's fighting to have its voice heard, um, but it's, it does complement some beautiful flavors in there. That's me trying to be as diplomatic as possible. That tuna is spectacular. Beautiful. So let's um, take you through this incredibly healthy, nutrient-rich, and delicious recipe. Take you through a blow-by-blow blow of how we arrive at this beautiful end creation. Take a look. Mm. smart choice and download your free cancer approved cookbook at bewellfoods.co.za today. Be well. Love. Food. Life.
Sport is not only a fun way to increase a child's physical activity level and toughness, I think, but to develop lifelong habits for good health as well, shaping their bodies, shaping their minds, and I think developing character. So as athletes, you learn the importance of teamwork and of following leadership, of developing leadership, the discipline and the training needed to participate in sports, I think helps to develop successful young people, adults as well. Joining us today is Nestle Milo's brand manager, Tumelo Ndlovu who will be elaborating on their commitment to child nutrition and sports. We've, we've loved this journey that we've been on with Milo because it's kind of been part of my DNA really growing up. It's been yeah. ever present and I know that, that the, the history of the brand has been incredible, but I think the importance, the focus on childhood sports and activity is what's shone through. Why so much importance placed on encouraging an active lifestyle? Thanks, uh, Graham. Um, you've put it perfectly just now. It's, it's for exactly those two reasons. Uh, the first reason why we encourage an active and a balanced lifestyle is because, number one, we need kids to be active in life so that they can live a healthier life. But the second thing, like you mentioned just now, is there's those core values that children can really learn from participating in sports. Things that you mentioned now, like discipline and leadership and things like respect are, are really things that grow them up to be really successful in whatever it is they want to For do. For sure. It's not just about, about sports. I remember from school days, there was a lot of intimidation around doing trials and like everyone running to the board there and seeing who made what team, but it doesn't have to be like that. It's right. really just about participation. So we've actually implemented our grassroots program um, where we partnered with various stakeholders, including government. And uh, in the last year and a bit, we've reached uh, almost 100,000 kids wow. really just going into schools and getting them active and getting them moving, which is really special to us because Nestle is really about enhancing the quality of life and contributing to a healthier future. So as the Nestle Milo brand, we are also very proud to do our bits in our own way. And I can tell you right now that there are, are hundreds of thousands of kids finding solace in yeah. sports, yeah. despite really difficult backgrounds, dealing with realities that we as adults would struggle with. Definitely. And sport becomes that outlet and an opportunity for them to, to progress and also like, like learn the depth of their character. Yeah. You get tested in sport, exactly. whether you're playing first team or fourth, you, you're gonna learn about yourself. Maybe you can elaborate a bit more on the home ground initiative and, and how that came about. So um, we during the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown in South Africa, we've had to stay quite safe. So in light of this, we came up with a great way of bringing some simple and fun uh, exercises into homes across South Africa. And that's really how the Home Ground uh, Initiative was born. And what we did, it's quite simple. We just share some, some fun and like family fun, especially routines to try at home. And we asked our Milo community to also share some videos of them doing it. Um, the response was amazing. Uh, for me, what I like is really the simplicity of it and the fact that you don't need any extra equipment or anything to participate. It's like similar exercises that I also do at home and you can feel the difference in energy levels from such a simple thing as well. And if you've got little ones at home, if you've had them at home during <laughs> lockdown, yeah, <laughs> exercise the energy, man. You need that, that outlet. Yeah. Um, I, I think for me, uh, maybe it's because I've got a young child and I understand how important it is to feed the brain at the critical phases of growth. Um, when the body's growing, the brain is also growing and they need that nutrients. Definitely. Why? And maybe you can, you can elaborate, because this really is for me a pillar of Milo, the yeah. commitment to child nutrition. So the Nestle Milo brand takes child's development very seriously. Uh, for us, it's our responsibility to partner with parents and encourage a balanced breakfast. Uh, and Milo is the perfect accompaniment for breakfast as well, because it adds more vitamins and more minerals to the foods that they're eating. Uh, we know that kids face very long days and uh, it will help them uh, get the energy and the sustained energy they need to get through their day a bit better. Uh, we know that uh, when speaking to many parents and caregivers and guardians that they really just want the best for their children yeah. and uh, often that means providing their children with what they need to succeed in life in whatever they're doing and to live a happy and fulfilled life. And for us, we, we really believe that that starts with the right nutrition uh, and a balanced breakfast in the morning to get the most out of their day every single day. And when I heard from one of your nutritionists, in fact, that, that one in five children in South Africa doesn't have breakfast. Yeah. Um, 
I, I mean, that's a, that's a problem to me. And then those that are having breakfast, how much of that is well balanced and giving them the nutrients that they need? Yeah. That's, that's absolutely vital. So for a brand that has managed to keep reinventing itself, despite having the core principles, of, yeah. and that's remained the same for like 90 years yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that, uh, what's, what's there in the future? What's next for, for Milo? So I mentioned to you earlier that um, with our grassroots program, uh, we reached just about 100,000 kids. We're very excited uh, to continue in the beginning of next year and go bigger and better and just get more South African kids moving and enjoying it as well. So uh, yeah, pretty excited about that. Uh, that's what's on the cards for us. I love it, man. Helping to shape a generation, future stars. If you want to create them on the national level, it starts yeah. as a child. Most important question, Ken, it's just a one word answer. Sure. Hot or cold, man? Cold. I'm a cold guy. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. See, finally, finally, from the man himself, it's cold. Yeah. Um, absolutely love what you're doing. Thank you so much for, for supporting children in the way that you are, my awesome. friend. Awesome. Thanks so much for, for having me here, Graham. I think that is something I am really looking forward to. 2021 cannot come soon enough, especially if we're going to be engaging that many kids, helping them to get active. That is so important that we lead a healthy and an active lifestyle, especially when it comes to our children. Breakfast your day with Nestle Milo. Thank you very much, Graham. Such inspiring words coming through. It's all about uh, looking at what we can do for the future generation in sports, teaching them to be young, disciplined, professional, and considerate individuals. Right now, though, it's time for us to look at how we can make someone smile this morning because we're about to win. I have an answer, winner. We're about to be 100% <laughs> announcing a <our> winner. Sure. <laughs> Get your 100% goodness with Crush. Scratch and stand the chance to win hundreds of goodness prizes for 100 days with hashtag Crush100. Name with love, fight over. Now we're all about being all 100 here in the studio. Are you feeling yeah. 100 this morning? Always 100%. Always. Oh, it's truly exciting. Got my juice in hand. Oh, what else could a man I'm ask for? I'm definitely helping myself to that after <laughs> yeah. this. Now, when it comes to keeping your body and mind in tip-top shape, exercise is important. But how do you stay 100% motivated, Uncle Tabsy, you may mm. ask? Well, we're bringing you a fitness tip to keep you focused. But before we get into that, we have to announce our daily crush 100% goodness winner who's mm -hmm. walking away with a fitness watch. How beautiful I mean, look at that. is that? That is nice. like the ultimate gadget for anyone who is into fitness. The drum roll is already going yes. and the winner is Janai Masiya. Let's get your face on the leaderboard. Yes, yes that's our 100% crush winner this morning. Janai Masiya. Let's see. I have uh, to. Out there at... Uh, uh, our oh, look at that. Wall look of at that. fame. You've made of it. 100% goodness winners. You have made it. You have made it. <laughs> now, here's the thing. We've asked our resident fitness guru, mm. Raul de Monet, to give us some fitness tips yes. to help everybody get into that 100% fitness routine and regime. And here they are. Number one, here's an idea. How about signing up for a virtual event? 100%. Yes. You don't have to mm. be at a live actual event mm. to be a part of the experience. There's so many of those virtual events taking place all over the place at the moment. You can't miss out. You haven't got an excuse. The second tip is nothing focuses the mind as effectively as the prospect of an event. Yeah. You know, when you're looking forward to something, when yes. you know something's going to be happening, you know that it's uh, a friend's wedding coming up in December or December is about to happen and you <laughs> want that summer body. Yeah. That event of December coming yeah. those beach visits let those motivate you it gives you a, a clear target to your workout so you know okay if i'm wearing this bikini like this or and i'm posing like this, this size, if i'm posing like that. this you know and the other tip here uh, <laughs> it's a top tip don't go straight to a marathon or a 100 kilometer cycle <laughs> straight <laughs> off the bat yeah. You're saying it like that. He's I, just like, I, I just don't do it. I mm. can't stress this enough. <laughs> I, I, I don't do a hundred kilometers mm. if you are not a hundred percent set up for it. I 100% <laughs> agree with you. I, I know people, I've got <laughs> friends Gutle, who literally are just like, okay, uh, summer's around the corner. I'm going to start doing like um, these like runs, these like 10, 15 kilometer mm. runs. Meanwhile, the person hasn't even done a one kilometer, kilometer. run this entire year. They end up uh, hating it, right? They end up hating it. Oh. It's not fun. So mm -hmm. be 100% with yourself. Uh, there are lots of highly rewarding shorter events to also try first. So look at maybe uh, a good chance where you, you know, uh, don't give yourself the opportunity to hate the event that you get into. Uh, find something that you might actually enjoy. 
Don't bite off more than you can chew <laughs> first time around. Please. Please. Mm -hmm. Uncle Tabsy mm -hmm. gave you all the 100% tips to get yourselves in tip-top shape mm -hmm. from our resident uh, gym guy, guru, <laughs> Ryle Demoni. What a great tip. And yeah. if you want your winning pick on our 100% crush leaderboard, mm -hmm. here is a quick reminder how to enter. I'm enjoying this 100% cr crush. You better be. Mm. <laughs> Are you ready to stand a chance to win 100% goodness prizes with crush such as Nutri Bullets, Veggie Bullets, Tefal Kitchen Appliances, Bar Fridges, Skincare Products, Fitness Products and Vouchers? 100% you are. 100% goodness winners will be announced daily on Expresso from Monday to Friday from September through December. To enter, buy Crush promo packs. See the back of the label to scratch. And if you find a unique code, dial the USSD number on the pack to stand a chance to win immediate prizes or go into the grand prize draw. If you do not find a unique code, keep buying Crush to find the hidden codes. Crush is 100% fruity, fresh, tasty, and refreshing. Made with love by Clover. Oh, you can make my day. Can you feel it, Mzansi? The core of your favorite places is just beyond the horizon. From Kruger Park to the Cape Winelands, summer in the cities of Durban and Josie to the endless reaches of those Garden Root beaches, Protea Hotels by Marriott welcomes you back. With Marriott Bonvoy members enjoying 25% off, including free breakfast, and non-members 15% off. Book your dream escape now on Marriott.com. Great news, although we shouldn't be surprised in the least. Table Mountain has yet again been nominated for Africa's leading tourist attraction in the World <laughs> Travel Awards. And this year's awards will certainly carry more weight in validating a country's excellence and winning the public trust in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. We need this kind of good news now. And joining us to speak about the award nomination is Executive Manager of Brand and Marketing, Giselle Esau. Giselle, a very good morning. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Thanks so, for having me. So good seeing you, Giselle. Now, listen, firstly, congratulations on yeah. the card. Now, we believe you obviously won this last year. It was the Table Mountain leading tourism attraction of 2019. But how hopeful are you that you'll win the award again this year? I know G and I definitely are, are on <laughs> the got to column. We've got to do it. We're voting. We're voting, yeah. Good news, yeah. We won it last year, leading attraction in Africa and the Indian Ocean. So we've been nominated in the same category which we are super hopeful about. I think we have a really good chance for that one. And the other good news is we've also been nominated as the leading attraction in the entire world. So wow. that's a huge one. And we're hoping that we can win that one too. 
Um, I, I, I have a lot of hope you've done it before. You're going to do it again. And I think now more than ever during the pandemic, how important are these awards in, in the increasing public trust uh, from internationals, especially, and proving our excellence as a tourism destination? Yeah, it's, it's usually important. It basically, it's, it's what we want to try and convey to the world that we are, you know, a safe destination. We're up and running. And um, winning things like this just basically, you know, it emphasizes to the entire world that we are, you know, the place to be we want to encourage it's it's not just for the mountain it's for cape town it's for the country it's to increase this um this ever growing trust amongst people and travelers that they can come to the the leading attraction in the world or in, in africa and just feel safe and know that you know that this this country and this city is open for tourism which is our biggest message and we want to work with as many people around that i mean this award is not just for table mountain it's really for the people for sa yeah, yeah i love that now obviously as important as it is does this also i would imagine remind us that uh, as a part of the world, Table Mountain is kind of still here, and is, is, it, is it more to just keep us at the top of mind? Because I'd imagine we're up against some stiff competition, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's it's not an easy feat to win this one by any means. We're up against some really big names. I mean, at Ferrari Park in Abu Dhabi, wow. it's really it's big name, and we need to beat these big guns that people already know. We need to put you know South Africa back in the spotlight. I think, especially during times like COVID. I mean, come on, it's one of the natural wonders of the modern world. Yeah. Surely it must win. Um, obviously, we've been celebrating on our show all of these minor victories in terms of borders opening, things relaxing. Obviously, September was a big month for the tourism industry. How is public support going since we've reopened? How is the mountain doing? Wow, we have had two insane, well, a really insane September month, and we are having a fantastic October in terms of the locals, you know, coming out to support us. September, we had um, a lockdown birthday special where we awarded everyone a chance to, if they had a birthday during lockdown, to come and have a um, take a trip up for free up the Cableway. And we had um, 16,000 people come and redeem those wow. tickets. We also had, a, yeah, a lot, a lot. We had a busy weekends in September. Then we had um, a comeback special, which was buy one ticket, get two free. And we had I mean, I think it was also about 2,000 people who redeemed that. We saw 31,000 people in September, and that, to me, says that people are willing to support the local local travel and tourism again. And October, we've got the 100 Rand special, and that's for the weeks only Monday to Friday, and you can get that online. But yeah, it's 100 Rand, it's 50 Rand up, 50 Rand down. It's, it's a total bargain. I would recommend it, and Raul, I'm sure, agrees. You run up. And you catch the cable car I was, down, baby. I was literally going to say that. <laughs> Gee, I was literally going to say that. And, and, and it leads to my next question, actually, Gee, is I'm one that literally always, um, I run up the mountain and I take a lot of guys up with me. And what I'm noticing now is we get to the top and obviously you earn the reward of the beautiful view, but then you catch a cable car down to rest the legs. I've had instances where some of the guys that I'm with are still a little bit anxious of going into the cableway. Sure. So my question to you is just to kind of put guys' minds at ease, what are some of the COVID-19 health and safety measures that you put in place to kind of ensure that, you know what, it is safe to actually use the cable way, the mountain's yeah. good to go and you don't have to be so anxious. Yeah, so of course we've, we've got really strong COVID measures in place. You're not allowed to enter the cable way unless you're wearing a mask. And um, the cable way normally takes up to 63 people plus the cabin masters of extra, so 64. We are now only filling up to 50% as per the regulations. Um, we sanitize the sanitized areas throughout the site. So bottom station, top station, you can sanitize, we sanitize before you get in the station. We also sanitize the cable car after people, after trips. Um, so we're quite strict and, and I think our main objective right now is to manage the queues. And that's why we're giving people a, the opportunity to come during the week. Cause we know that those are quieter times. You can be really socially distant. Um, and you kind of, what I like to say to the locals is this is the first time I think in the history of the cable way that we have the mountain is literally just here for the locals. For the first time during these few months, come and enjoy it. There are no internationals. This mountain, which belongs to us, is now fully for you and for us to enjoy. Um, I've seen during the week as well, people just kind of get, I know, they, they're so socially distant. It's almost like you're getting a private car. So, yeah, we're trying <laughs> to do our best to, to kind of keep the queues in check by offering these amazing online specials that, you know, come during the week, come when it's quiet, come and enjoy this mountain as, as a South African. And for the first time without any internationals to kind of like take up space. <laughs> I'm going to say, go and spend your lunch break if you can. If you live anywhere in the city, I'll just go and nip up. I, I can speak from my personal experience. I've had quite literally some of the most life-affirming moments 
of my life on that mountain. It's something truly remarkable and special and I'm constantly blown away by the fact that it's ours and it's there. It's my mountain, I always call it. <laughs> um, she is mine, okay? And that feeling I get when I come back into Cape Town if I've been away and the first yeah. thing I see is that, it's amazing. So okay. I, I, my, my heart's in this one and I know voting obviously just closed uh, Sunday the 25th of October at midnight. When will you guys hear who has won it or hopefully that you have won it? When are the results out? As far as we know, it's early um, November, so it's not a lot of time. We'll probably know really soon, and then, I mean, fingers crossed. So we do know it's early November, as far as we know, yeah. Oh, good luck. Good, good luck. I'm, good luck. I'm awesome. very <laughs> nervous, because I take it personally. If we don't win this, it's going to cut me deep, man. It's going to cut me real deep. Um, Giselle, your team is just doing a phenomenal job. I know it's pretty easy when you've got such an amazing attraction. <laughs> Let's just hope the rest of the world feels about this like we feel about it. But please send our best, and, and good luck to the rest of your team. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers, Giselle. Now, guys, of course, the winners of the Africa region in the World Travel Awards will be announced on the 9th of November 2020. And, of course, Table Mountain is contesting this award with five African wow. giants in the attractions industry. And that's including Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania as well. So, I know we've come <laughs> out uh, tops last year, but it's going to be a tough one. So, let's hope we can make that two years running. You we can do it, I believe. I'm missing yeah, the mountain. I got this. <laughs> it's my lunch bag. I'm going to go. I'm actually going to hit the mountain. <laughs> Because the thing is, it is adventure season. So you want to make sure that you're out and about you're doing those kind of things. It's time, though, for us to make uh, one more person smile by making them a smooth Tropica winner. And you could be using this week's grand prize towards a trip to see Table Mountain. You've Ooh. seen how beautiful it is, the amazing yes. stories that come out of there from anyone that's ever been to Table Mountain. You've mm. been to Table Mountain I've twice. I've been to Table Mountain twice. The first time was with the high school trip mm. back in the day. Mm. And the second time, graduation day, because my mom hadn't seen yeah. it. So it was an experience experience for her as well. And Truly marvellous. The third time it's going to be you and I hiking yes, up hiking. Table Mountain. Uh, but of course, <laughs> when it comes to this competition where we have given you smooth winners, we've had six of them so far flipping the caps and finding smooth on Fridays right here on Expresso. And you could be next. Yes, truly it could be you. Now here's a recap of our winners starting off with Darius from Tembisa who won himself a 1,000 Rand travel start voucher. Umsinda from Bumalanga and Bali from Johannesburg who won microwaves. Tata. Mm -hmm. And then we had Mohin from KZN who won a Samsung Serif TV and Tanya and Nomfunda won smooth washing machines. So of course, we're only halfway through the competition. Six more grand weekly prizes are for grabs with this week's being at 2,000 rand travel start voucher. That's exciting. It's travel season. You want to make mm -hmm. sure that you unlock that. Uh, and of course, this is how you enter. Buy any Tropica promotional pack with a red cap, mm -hmm. flip the cap, and if you find smooth underneath the cap, mm -hmm. you stand a chance of winning. Should but I if you don't find, find smooth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like I call Tabsy, make sure to try flipping another cap until you actually do. Ta -da! Once you've found smooth, <laughs> then follow the details on the pack to stand a chance of winning smooth instant prizes. It's that easy. It's beautiful. Plus, you also stand a chance of going into the draw to win weekly grand prizes live on the show here on Expresso Morning Show every Friday Woo! by flipping a cap on our wall, this wall here, where you find smooth, stand to find smooth out of these nine numbers. It's easy this morning, but trust me, on Fridays, <laughs> it seems like the stakes are quite high yes. and uh, people often do struggle with it a little mm -hmm. bit. Right? And, th and this Friday, you could be flipping the caps for another chance of winning a 2,000 Rand travel start voucher that can be used towards your next holiday trip. So go on and get your Tropica today to enter. The more Tropica you buy and find smooth, the more chances to win. T's and C's on tropica.co.za. We could be calling you on Friday to flip the caps. Oh, you've really found smooth. <sighs> Are you smooth or not smooth? Buy Tropica. Flip the cap. If you find smooth, you stand a chance to win smooth prizes. Tropica. Nothing smoother.
Africa. We are calling on you to vote for your South African classics for a chance to win weekly classic prizes. Vote for your favorite music, fashion, dance moves and more by dialing star 120 star 2676 hash for your chance to win. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Expresso here on SABC3. Now we're back in the kitchen for one of the most loved classic dishes here in Zanzi. And that has to be Sam and Beans, also known as Umusho, which is one of my favorite dishes in the entire world, especially when it's prepared by my mother. So, Teresa, no pressure, okay? <laughs> it's one of okay, those okay. comforting homegrown <laughs> dishes that is typically enjoyed warm, especially on a cold, rainy day. But today we're switching it up. We're showing you how you can change it up and turn it into a crowd-pleasing salad to be enjoyed on those bright sunny days with our Clover Classic Samp and Bean Summer Salad. Now remember, if you want to be winning some awesome classic prizes with Clover Classic, then you need to keep voting for your favorite South African classics by dialing star 120 star 2676 hash to vote in our weekly poll. And you could also stand a chance of participating on the That's Classic Game on our sister show, Afternoon Express. So get on entering and keep it classic. <laughs> yes. Teresa. Hi. We're back with something different. Yes. Special. Yes. So Tell me about it. Please. Slightly different way of preparing your samp and beans. It's mm -hmm. a summer salad. You know, a lot of us like it plain or in a curry mm -hmm. or a stew. So this is something a little bit different, but very, very delicious and lots of fresh ingredients as well. So Ooh. it's lovely and light and flavorful. So what I've done is I've put some Clover Classic spread in the pan and I've added some okay. red onion and we're just going to soften that. Are you not cooking on high heat? You just want it soft? A medium, yeah. Mm. You don't want it to burn. And we're adding garlic as well. And if your heat is too high, it's going to burn and taste a little bit bitter. That's true. So just keep it over a medium heat. Keep it moving and soften it. And I then, mostly yeah. enjoy the aroma when you oh, mix, yes. you know, your butter, garlic, onions, it's peppers. It's honestly <laughs> just the best. And you know that something delicious is on the way yes. when you smell that. So you're just going to cook that off for a couple of minutes, get it lovely and soft, mm -hmm. and then you're going to add your samp and beans. And we have cooked this already. Okay. So you would need to do that step ahead of time. So when you pre-cook it, do you soak it? How do you cook your oh, samp yes. and beans? Or do you buy a ready-made um, samp and beans? So I uh, always just refer to the cooking instructions on the mm -hmm. pack, but usually you would soak it for about eight hours or overnight, and then you boil it. Um, and so you would need to do it the day before because it does take a little bit of time. Mm. So we're just going to add that into our onion. And of course, I mean, this is very good for us. We've got vitamins and minerals and the beans yeah. have got protein and fiber. So it's yeah. a lovely filling, nutritious meal. So mix that together and we're going to add some cherry tomatoes, a bit of color and okay. some salt and pepper. I love the variation of different colors because yeah. for me in my head, the more color, the more nutrients you get out of a dish as well. Absolutely. And flavor. Absolutely. The more colors, the better. You're going to eat the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly why we are here. Let me know actually how you prepare your samp and beans back at home because as I mentioned earlier on, we usually eat it when it's like cold, a yeah. rainy day, and Absolutely. we mix it with lamb sometimes yeah. or mints. Everyone's curry. got their own way of doing mm. it. Yeah, and you can cook it with water, you can cook it with stock, you yeah. can add spices, so you can really kind of customize it to the way you like it. Right, so that's done. We've just tossed that together. Very quick and easy. And I'm going to pop it into a bowl. Just like that. Just like that. And we're going to add some more fresh ingredients. Can I ask you to help me with the marinade while I'm doing that? Not a problem. So, so we've got like me to all do. our ingredients here. So we're going to add one scoop of our Clover Classic Mayo mm -hmm. and Clover Classic Dairy Snack. Okay. So you can pop that in the bowl. All right. So one scoop of each. One scoop of each, okay. yeah, into the bowl. And what I'm doing here is I've got our uh, mixture that we cooked earlier, and I'm going to be adding some fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. So some red pepper and yellow pepper. On a normal day, would you then allow it to cool off before you add your yeah. fresh vegetables? You can, you can let it cool for a couple of minutes, okay. yeah. I'm going to add some cucumber. I've got the mayo in there. Brilliant. So we can add a scoop of the Clover Classic. So I've added cucumbers and spring onions. I'm going to add some olives as well. Mm. And then just mix it together. Very, very easy. Are you an olives person? I am, but I know it's not for everyone. So if it's not your favorite, you could leave it out. Do you like olives? Not at all. Not for you. Not at all, but I do not mind olives, to be very honest with you. But I have a theory. So people who eat olives enjoy pineapple on pizza. 
Mm, I'm on the fence with that one. Okay. I'll eat it, I'll eat it. Okay. But it's not my, my first choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your preference. But I won't turn it down, no. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that looks brilliant. So you're going to add in a bit of chopped coriander and parsley. Um, the lovely, whole thing? The whole thing, okay. yeah. Lovely freshness. And then you can also add a little bit of lemon zest. So lovely and fresh. I can that imagine how flavorful it's like. It will taste. Absolutely. Wait, when you say lemon zest, do I cut just it uh, and then? No, you can just grate it straight in. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to cut it in half and you can squeeze some fresh juice into it as well. Awesome. So awesome. very, very easy. You know what? Lovely this flavor. is just classic, okay? It's a classic totally. experience that you need to learn and you do not want to miss out on this timeless taste. So head over to, you know, um, our website, expressoshow.com to get the recipe and remember to tune into Afternoon Express on Monday to see how you could be winning some of those classic prices by voting for your South African classics in the weekly poll. And if you've missed any of the steps to this sap and bean salad, well, here's a quick, quick recap. But firstly, just look at how perfect yeah. it looks. We've added a little bit of feta. Mm -hmm. and what you can do is drizzle your dressing over the top and you're done. Very, very easy and fresh. Okay, so and I'm holding you back basically. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like that's fine. So you can mix it together. Mix, mix, mix. Okay, and we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice in there. So we mix that in and we drizzle it on top. Easy, easy. Beautiful. Gorgeous. So you can have it next to the braai as a side dish. Beautiful. I hope I didn't mix your dish up for presentation. <laughs> Absolutely oh perfect. Spot on. Love it. <laughs> if you missed the steps, well, here you go. <laughs> Oh, so yum. Oh, so delicious. Time for us to take a look at those news headlines. We start off here in South Africa with Tourism Minister Mamuloko Kubai Ngubani said that the government is hopeful of opening the country's borders to all countries before the December holidays. Kubai Ngubani said that the opening of the country for international tourism would be a major boost to the economy, but stressed that the government has to balance this with the potential risk of enabling a second wave of COVID-19 infections. If infections were to climb once again, the tourism sector sector would lose many more jobs and a lot more businesses would go under, she said. South African liquor brand, when, uh, brand owners association chairperson Sibani Mgadi says the industry, the alcohol industry that is, is in full support of the authorities doing their work after some clubs were bust for contravening the Disaster Management Act. This follows the raid and closure of a lifestyle lounge in Santon by Police Minister Becky Trele, along with the SAPS and Johannesburg Metropolitan Police Department offices in the early hours of Sunday morning. The venue was found to not be abiding by COVID-19 restrictions relating to the curfew, social distancing and the wearing of masks. In international news, millions of highly polluting used cars from rich countries are being dumped on developing nations. This according to a UN report just released. The report says that between 2015 and 2018, some 14 million older poor quality vehicles were exported from Europe, Japan and the US. Up to 80% failed to meet minimum, minimum safety and environmental standards in exporting countries. As well as causing accidents, these cars worsen air pollution and contribute heavily to climate change. Many have also been tampered with to remove valuable parts. Chileans have voted overwhelmingly in support of rewriting their constitution. 
which dates to the dictatorship of General Augusto Pinochet. A referendum was called after mass protests against inequality. President Sebastián Piñera acknowledged the result and praised the peaceful voting. He said it was the beginning of a path that they must all walk together. The referendum asked Chileans to qu two questions. Firstly, if they wanted a new constitution and secondly, what kind of body they would want to draw it up. And next, our new Miss South Africa receives a message from 1948's winner, newly crowned uh, Miss South Africa, Shudufadzo Musida's home village of Hamasia, is still abuzz with joy and elation. Now, located 142 kilometers from Bulukwani in the Vembe district municipality is where the new Miss South Africa calls home. She says the entire village brought her to where she is now, and it has sent her a message of hope that where you come from doesn't matter. The first winner of Miss South Africa after World War II, Evelyn Makaskal, had a special message for this year's winner, and it read, Dear Shudu, you're about to embark on the most memorable year of your young life. For the next 12 months, you will be the face of South Africa, and we trust that you will hold the name of our beloved country as high as the young ladies before you. Hamba notiko, go with God. Makaskill was crowned by General Jan Smuts in the Johannesburg City Hall. That was back uh, on the 9th of March in 1948. And among the judges were Miss America, Miss France, and Miss Great Britain. Today, she is age 91, and she lives with her husband, Ronnie, in retirement at a retirement home in Bergfleet in Cape Town. How beautiful is that? That's where we leave it for now. Here is a look at your sports with Graham. Let's start with our rugby news first, and unfortunately not the best news for the Springboks or Stormers. In fact, as Captain Sia Khaleesi will be out with injury for two to three weeks. That was after sustaining a leg injury in his Super Rugby Unlocked clash against the Pumas on Friday. So Khaleesi will miss his team's big one against the Bulls this coming Saturday. Yesterday it was also confirmed that Peter Steph to Toy will not be playing any rugby this year. That was after picking up a serious leg injury back in March. On to netball, the Eastern Cape Allos were crowned netball league. Division B champions. That was after beating the Kingdom Queens 35-31 yesterday in a tight encounter. The Queens gave the game away in that final quarter after an impressive performance in their first appearance in the tournament. So the promotion relegation match between the Allos and the Kingdom Stars will take place today and that one's at 5 p.m. Then on to footballing news. Bafana Bafana head coach Molefi and Tseki has named his 25-man squad to play Sao Tome in November. That's in the Cameroon 2022 AFCON qualifiers. So the first match will be played at the Moses Mabida Stadium and that's on the 13th of November at 7pm and then three days later they'll play their away fixture at 5pm. And veteran goalkeeper Etumalin Kune will make his return to the squad. And staying with footballing news but a little further afield, South Korean footballer Son Hyung min assisted by Harry Kane yet again secured a 1-0 win for Tottenham Hotspur that was against Burnley in the Premier League at Turf Moor late last night. So captain Harry Kane has now been directly involved in 13 goals this season. This has been the most ever recorded by a player in Tottenham's first six EPL games of a season with five goals and eight assists. And the other fixture from last night, West Brom and Brighton drew one goal apiece. And on to cricket in the IPL, the Kings 11. They claim an eight-wicket win over the Kolkata Knight Riders. So the Indian Premier League has continued with uh, plenty of action last night with the Kings 11 uh, claiming their fifth consecutive victory now after beating the Kolkata Knight Riders by eight wickets at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium. Indian cricket keeper Mandeep Singh, 66 runs from 56 deliveries. And Chris Gale, who's been pretty good form at this tournament, of course, from the West Indies, he smashed 51 from 29 balls to help guide the Kings 11 to a comfortable win in the end. And there'll be one IPL encounter to look out for today, and that's the Sunrisers Hyderabad taking on the Delhi Capitals at 4 p.m. And then finally, tennis star Rafa Nadal has swapped his tennis rackets for golf clubs and finished in sixth place at the Balearic Golf Pro-Am Championships in his hometown of Mallorca in Spain. The world number two came in 10 shots behind the eventual winner on the day after the three-day tournament. Nadal will now return to the tennis court on Monday for the Paris Masters and I'm sure feeling pretty good after his recent successes in France. And that's where we leave our sporting headlines for today. Let's take another look at your beautiful sunrise photos and what the weather has in store.
Before we get into the forecast for the day, here are your stunning sunrise pictures. Faith Metzler is representing the mother city, Cape Town, with this one. You start off the morning with dreary conditions. Do expect 25% chance of rain. We stick to the mother city with uh, Ashwin Akeem's bold sunrise picture. Your temperatures range from 15 to 21 degrees. Thank you so much for your sunrise pictures. Please continue to share them on our social media platforms and we will for sure show them live on the show. We absolutely love seeing them. But not um, on to not so great news. Alarming news emerged yesterday with the UN Climate Change Agency saying that while Africa is already being ravaged by floods, droughts, cyclones, warmer weather conditions and a desert locust invasion, the worst is yet to come. The agency says warming temperatures are slashing crop fields, which is devastating news as agriculture is the backbone of Africa's economy. This will have a serious impact on the continent's food security, economy and health systems. The World Meteorological organization added that crop fields have already shrunk by between 8 and 13 percent in some African countries due to rising temperatures while the number of people suffering from hunger has increased to about 45 percent. Let's spare a thought for everyone who's going through these um, difficult times. Now we bring it back home with um, our temperatures for the day. Warm conditions are expected across South Africa, but thunderstorms are lurking in some provinces. Skyler Bulogwane, 1629. Bombela, you start off your morning with a low of 17, reaching a high of 30 degrees. Party cloudy for you, Pretoria, reaching a maximum of 31 degrees. Johannesburg, it's a mostly sunny day with a high of 29 degrees. Mahikeng, 2033. Klekstorp, 25% chance of rain with a low of 19 and an afternoon high of 32. Partly sunny with thunderstorms in Kimberley 2134. Uh, do expect 40% chance of rain as well. And Bloemfontein, you start off this Tuesday morning with a low of 16 and will peak at 32 degrees. Richards Bay 2232. Peter Marinsburg 1730. Uh, it's mostly sunny but do expect some thunder showers at 40%. Durban 2125 are your temperatures. Namklanje. Mtata starts off the morning with 16 but will reach a high of 32 degrees. East London, 1927. And Cradock, your low is 14, but you will reach an afternoon temperature of 36. And Port Elizabeth, 1625. George, your temperatures range from 13 to 23. Dreary morning in Cape Town, 1521. And Vusta, 1029 on your temperatures today. Sutherland starts off the morning with a cool 7 degrees, but will reach a high of 27. And Uppington, the sun is out with a low of 19, with an afternoon temperature of 37 degrees. That was a final look at your weather this Tuesday morning. Remember, whatever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather, make sure to have yourselves a feel-good kind of day. Thank you so much, Kutli, and thank you to all of you sending through uh, your beautiful sunrise pictures. Well, for the second hour of the show, we're going to be focusing on stroke awareness. Yeah. I'm going to be chatting to Lutfia Vayich, a survivor or the wife of a survivor of a stroke, which I cannot wait to get a personal experience of what that journey has been like. And I'm sure a lot of people out there will be able to relate. It's a big story. Of course, we observe uh, World Stroke Week. That's from the 29th to well, the 28th to the 3rd of November. And then we're going to be looking at healthy eating with game. We've got a dietitian coming to join us and telling us what we need to be eating and what we need to just cut out. We'll see you after this. What's better than a sugar-coated, deliciously crispy golden brown donut and 100% Arabica beans brewed to perfection? Treat yourself and warm up your morning with a little sweetness from Mac Cafe with the all-new mini donut and cappuccino offer. A little lovin' doesn't have to cost a lot. Great coffee, simple.
Welcome back. You're live with Expresso. Thank you so much for tuning in. As we join now, a very important conversation. This year, we commemorate World Stroke Week from the 28th of October up until the 3rd of November, with World Stroke Day being commemorated on the 29th of this month. Uh, an unbelievably important opportunity for us to spread awareness around this. Now, according to the Heart and Stroke Foundation, um, around 70 South Africans die every day due to a stroke in this country, which is an alarmingly high number. And joining us uh, from the Stroke and um, Heart Foundation, Chief Ex Executive Officer of the Heart and Stroke Foundation, in fact, and a good friend of the show, Professor Pamela Naidu, to give us some expert knowledge and insight um, into what is, must be, surely, looking at those numbers, a very important opportunity for awareness. So, Professor, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, no, it's an absolute pleasure. It's lovely to be back. A very important awareness drive we obviously have because uh, together with heart disease, strokes is really the second highest burden of disease in the country. Wow. Yeah. Sure. So that follows, obviously, the cluster of HIV, AIDS, and mm. tuberculosis. And so it's a pretty, pretty serious It's a heavy, it's a heavy hitter, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. I mean, I want to take it back to the basics. For someone who doesn't understand what a stroke is, we hear it all the time, stroke, 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 but we're not really sure what it is if we haven't experienced someone close to us having experienced it. Can you please explain to us what a stroke is? Yeah, I think that the simplest way to understand it is literally a brain attack. Mm. And there's one of two ways that can happen. One is what we call an ischemic stroke. So what happens is there's a blockage in the blood vessel in the brain. Mm -hmm. And then obviously if you've got a blockage, you're going to find that you, that particular, the functionality of that part of the brain is going to be affected. Mm -hmm. And usually it's kind of across the body. So you'll find one side of the body is affected by it. Mm -hmm. And I think the alarming thing is that you can start to lose your neuron functioning. Wow. So when those cells die, mm -hmm. obviously then it's going to affect, you know, both your mind and your body functioning, right? Yeah. Um, so that's the one way of getting a stroke. The other way is when you pretty much have a blood vessel burst in your brain and then you hemorrhage mm. and so that causes that surrounding area to be damaged uh, but the effects are similar mm. yeah is there a, a spectrum a scale can you have a light stroke something that doesn't affect you as badly as we have seen some strokes can have a devastating effect um, in the long term as well is there a, a scale of can you have a minor stroke mm. you can Absolutely, you can. And you can sort of almost recover 100%, you know. But I think the, the critical thing is that you've got to get help, medical help, timely asleep. Immediately. Yeah, because if you get the emergency care, and they, then they can reverse the damage. You will probably have residual effects, but it won't be as damning. And the body, as can, you, the body can heal. Mm. That being said, then, what yeah. are the, the warning signs? How do we know when we need to, yeah. to jump to action? And I've heard the term fast. What does that pertain to? Yes, your very important question. So the thing is, you, if you and I are having a stroke, we you kind of know instantaneously something's not something's right, not but you right. actually can't recognize it for mm. yourself. So, so therefore, it's important for the people you work with, the people, you know, your family and your colleagues and so on, uh, to know the FAST acronym. Mm. And basically what it stands for, F is for face. So if you feel somebody's looking offish and you suspect they're having a stroke, you ask them to, well, sort of smile or show their teeth. And if you find one side of the face drooping, so those That's muscles what, aren't uh, able to exactly, contract. Okay. Yes, because it's very involuntary, you know. Mm. You can't control it. Um, and then A is for arms. So you ask somebody to, to raise both their arms and you'll find one will automatically drop involuntarily. So, and you'll find it's all kind of on the same side. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then for speech, I mean, I think that is quite a giveaway because what ha happens is when you try and talk to the person, it's unintelligible. Mm. So they can't recall the words. It sounds like gibberish, literally, mm. or they can't speak, you know, and they ha possibly have a very severe headache as mm. well. Um, the T is really, call, it's like a call to action. Okay. So the T is get the person timelessly to a hospital. Timeless, timeless, timeless. Yeah, okay, absolutely. so face, arms, speech. So, 
And do it fast. And do it fast, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. Uh, I want to kind of unpack the, not necessarily unpack, but discuss the myths around strokes. For example, I know that they say if you smell burnt toast, you're about mm. to have a stroke. And also so it's term. only limited to older people and a young person cannot get a stroke. So can you please um, explain that to us? Yes, in the age of misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> fake news, that's fake news. And fake yeah. news. It's totally. So I think the key thing to remember is that whatever information the Heart and Stroke Foundation, you know, will impart or the doctors will, mm. uh, you know, medical associations is all evidence-based. Mm. There's absolutely no scientific evidence for what, you know, those myths. Mm. And so we will, you know, maybe it's idiosyncratic. You know, one or two people experience it and now it becomes oh, now there's a, a link. general yeah. symptom. Yeah, now there's a link. So, yeah. so no, that, that is really not true. I think to rather stick with what is the evidence. Mm. And the evidence is, you know, the symptoms that I just mentioned. Um, uh, and, and in terms of age, can younger people suffer from it? And what are those risk yes, factors? Yes, uh, sorry, that, that's mm. the second part of the question. Yes, absolutely. But I think that, you know, some scientists don't like when, when you say the law of averages, but if you just use numbers and you look at averages, the point is people who are 40 and older, possibly more towards 50, depending on male, female, because more women will suffer a stroke than, uh, than males, um, then you're more susceptible to it. However, having said that, we know we've got our champion, for example, Etienne Reneker, who's uh, an ex-rugby player who suffered a stroke at a very young age. Yes. And that is, uh, the way to look at it is to look at your risk profile. So there's a couple of telling things, you know, that can help you decide, am I at risk or am I not at risk? Mm -hmm. One is familial history. So obviously, if you have a strong family history of uh, cardiovascular a disease. A genetic trace. Yeah, sure. there's a genetic. But, but having said that, that's only like about 20 to 30 percent of the risk. Okay. The, the, the 70 to 80 percent is really behavioral factors. Mm. So it's your, your um, body mass index or your weight. Um, it's what you eat. So hypertension, for example, is one of the key drivers of a stroke. So you can be young and be hypertensive, and if, you, if your numbers are 140 over 100 and it gets worse, you, even if you're 30, you're going to be at risk for a stroke. Wow. And, you know, excessive salt consumption, for example, uh, drives hypertension. hypertension yeah. So, you know, it's important to look at direct and indirect factors. And then it's probably the best way to do it is to look at a cumulative risk score. So am I overweight or obese? Do I eat badly? Am I a couch potato? So am I not getting my 30 minutes of exercise? Not in a gym, just keep moving, be mm -hmm. active. Um, and am I um, hypertensive? Um, and do I have genetic... Uh, uh, a trace there. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm starting to pick up that possibly to some degree it is preventable. But what we do if we are at risk to prevent a stroke from happening and how do we treat a stroke? I'm going to ask the professor to think about those and you can think about that as well and weigh in on the conversation. If you've got any questions or comments relating to strokes, we're going to be speaking to the wife of a stroke survivor to get a personal account of what that's like. So you want to stick around. their 80th birthday and as part of the festivities they're giving you a chance to win your share of 1 million rands in prizes oh yes that's correct grocery hampers and vouchers are up for mm. grabs daily while stylish luxury le creuset pot sets can be yours weekly and the grand prize a stunning kitchen makeover Ooh. and to enter is really simple buy any two cool products dial star 120 star 1987 hash and follow the prompts and remember keep your tail slip as proof to qualify for your awesome Prize. Competition ends 13 November 2020. T's and C's do apply. Coup is the best you can do.
You're still locked in with your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Now, when it comes to eating and eating well, it's important for both good health and, of course, our well-being. Now, healthy eating not only helps us to maintain a healthy weight, but it also reduces our risk of developing chronic diseases. And our clinical dietitian, Bali Mapoli, joins us this morning to chat about the importance of healthy eating and how it's ultimately a lifestyle decision. And one you can easily make now by taking part in the Game On hashtag Unbeatable You Challenge, which is offering healthy eating plans and exercise programs to get you started. <laughs> Bali, how are you doing this morning? Good morning. I'm, I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for having me this morning. <laughs> and Bali, I want to get right into it because, you know, lockdown really has affected so many of us. We speak about this so often on the show. It has affected us mentally and physically with studies showing that on average, we gained about three to six kilos while cooped up at home. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about the toll lockdown has had on our bodies and also why Game has now launched its Game On hashtag Unbeatable You Challenge. It has been such difficult and different uh, times and our bodies did take a knock and primarily it was due to the fact that our normal routine had changed, how, I mean, the choices of food that we normally choose, we decided not to eat that because of just an emotional roller coaster that we're going through. So GAME has this campaign, the GAME on Unbeatable View Challenge. And what it is about, basically, in my opinion, it's about giving South Africans that opportunity to just press the reboot button and, you know, take us back to our normal, healthy lifestyle that we'll normally follow before the lockdown. I love that we're all snatching our bodies together. We're all getting the summer body these uh, collectively, mm. right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely indeed. Now, obviously, these opportunities you mentioned, I think it's incredible. There's a hub of free content made available for over four weeks, and it's been produced in partnership with leading fitness experts. But in Bali, why do you want South Africans to take part and obviously take advantage of this incredible platform? I would say I really urge South Africans to take advantage of this platform because what GAME has done, firstly, they've brought the renowned experts in the field of nutrition, like myself as a dietitian, but also in the field of fitness. So that on its own is just a brilliant thing, but also it is for free. So I think if, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. We do encourage that individuals go see their healthcare professionals for individualized uh, nutrition therapy and fitness therapy. Yes, we do. Uh, but this platform just offers you that push because you know that, I mean, it is not easy to lose five kilograms. It is very easy to gain it, but it, is, it can be quite frustrating and difficult to lose that weight. And I absolutely love that because you're not just pu pushing the fitness side to it, but also the healthy lifestyle. And because we do know that abs are made in the kitchen. Yes. And Imbani, <laughs> I, I want you to touch on that as well. How important is it to supplement a healthy eating program and plan with an exercise program? It is very important to supplement a healthy eating program or regime with the fitness and or exercise program. And one of the main reasons, uh, I mean, keeping active has a host of health benefits from heart health, brain health, gut health, you name it. Um, but when you're trying to also lose weight in terms of fat loss, Keeping active helps a lot in facilitating that process, but also just body toning as well. Keeping active or being um, exercising helps a lot with that. So when you combine the two, in my professional opinion, I often say it's a, a, a match made in the health uh, heaven because you're allowing yourself when you are active, we find that people who keep active or who exercise, they tend to choose nourishing food. But at the same time, when you are eating well, you are also more inspired to keep active. Whether it is just about, you know, your overall health, but also even if it is about um, just, you know, trying to achieve weight management. Hence, this Game On Unbeatable You Challenge is about combining the two healthy eating and um, the exercise program as well. Uh, absolute beautiful words in Bali. Now, those two assets and aspects of fitness that you're speaking about, 
absolute powerful tools. Now, on top of that, you're a strong advocate for the fact that healthy eating does not have to be difficult as well. So why do you believe this? And also, is it easy to create a different meal or anything just to kind of ensure that we stay on track? I definitely am an advocate of that, that healthy eating should not be difficult. And I believe in that because healthy eating does not have to translate to eating unfamiliar foods or foreign foods. Healthy eating should be about eating foods that nourish your body. But when we start putting all the glitz and glam in food and start making people eat unfamiliar foods just in pursuit of health, that is where it becomes a little bit difficult because now you're saying a person must go out of their own food culture to find those foods. So that you can achieve by eating foods that you're familiar with. You will see on the game and beatable you challenge platform that we've got an eating plan and planning is everything so meal planning is everything you'll see that that eating plan provides you with different options which you can choose and there's a little bit of facility um, when it comes to that because you can choose uh, some other breakfast and choose some other lunches and choose some other dinners that are suitable for you and Bali you definitely make us excited for summer making sure that we all snatch together thank you so much for your time and all this sound advice um, and ensuring that we just live a healthier lifestyle all of us thank you so much for having me well there you have it winter's past spring is here and summer is near as well get all your health and wellness essentials to get your body summer ready shop at your nearest game store or online right now but that is not all everybody you can also take part in the game on hashtag unbeatable you challenge competition now all you have to do is take a photo of yourself participating in one of the game on hashtag unbeatable you challenges online and post it on your instagram page tagging at game stores underscore sa and one of the leading fitness expert influencers in your post when you enter and don't forget to use that hashtag hashtag game on challenge to stand a chance to win a 2000 rand a game stores voucher now remember those t's and c's do apply and can be found on expressoshow.com and the competition runs until the 9th of november 2020 yeah what are you waiting for and of course remember game stores are opening hours are from monday to friday from nine to six on saturday it's from nine to five and Sunday and public holidays from 9 to 4. Hurry up! <laughs>Welcome back to it, your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso. We are live on SABC3. It's a Tuesday morning and you're just in time uh, to get schooled and educated on all things that's got to do with stroke. Because yes. uh, it's, uh, uh, we're observing a World Stroke Awareness from the 28th of October to the 3rd of November. And we've still got Professor Pamela Naidu with us here, who's going to be answering all of your questions that you've got through uh, on our social media, Expresso Morning Show SABC3. And uh, we've got quite a few for you, Professor. People okay. are very, very keen to know and to learn 
Tamika says, is it just stress that causes a stroke or what else causes strokes apart from stress? Mm. So if I could just quickly say, I think stress is like very commonly used for mental health conditions. Yes. And so it's sometimes a bit misused, I guess. Mm. And I think if, if, you know, if, the, if the public understands stress to be perhaps like a anxiety that drives you or a bit of depression, mm. a bit of both, mm. I think it's important to understand that you could have an acute um, feeling like that yes. and you can have it over time. Yes. It's really not combined with the, the other uh, risk factors that I spoke about earlier. Mm. If you have persistent anxiety mm. and persistent depression, that could perhaps lend itself to, mm. but it doesn't cause a stroke. Okay. Ah. Well, the next uh, uh, question comes from Gladys Rambau, who says, how long does it take for a person to heal from stroke? Mm, very complex question. It's a, it sounds like it because oh, you do have a whole spectrum exactly. of, of strokes uh, but how would you address that how would you answer that so I think what is key and it's unfortunate that we don't have those facilities to the extent that perhaps um, established economies do like yes. in the West mm. is rehabilitation facilities mm. so if you have whether it's a mild a moderate or a severe stroke if you if you're consistent with your rehabilitation mm. you can actually get a large part of your functioning back because mm. science is so advanced now, mm. you know, say for example, if your speech is affected, mm. we have neuro linguistic programming that can rechannel the neural pathways. But they take time, and you've got to be facility over a period, and mm. uh, no two people can respond the same way to even a process like that. Absolutely, mm. Mm. Professor, you are touching on very important things. Just the fact that we are still a developing country, we don't have these facilities mm. to assist. So it's very important for us once again to ask these questions to at least try to understand what we are dealing with. With here. Now the final question comes from Marlene. She says, I had a stroke in 2013, recovered well, but from time to time drools either left or right side of my mouth. I'm quite concerned about it. However, at times I'm kind of unstable in a sense that I fall over my own feet. Is it something to be concerned about? Mm. Look, I think, I think so. I don't think overly concerned because mm -hmm. that's obviously the residual effect from the stroke. Mm. But what I do think is what people are not doing is not just the rehabilitation process, okay. but you've got to follow up with your physician your neurologist mm. in this case. Okay. You know, even if it's once a year or yeah. twice a year, if you're concerned about the residual effects, yes. you should be checked for it. Mm. Is it possible, uh, uh, Professor, uh, for someone to go through their rehabilitation and sort of recover, and then months later, or even years later, find that they've got all of those sort of residual uh, 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 things coming through again? Unfortunately, yes, because yeah. you can have a recurring stroke. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Well, the so, next question yeah. is from Laverne Kutsia, who says, my father had a severe stroke. He couldn't walk uh, or eat on his own, but uh, he can eat and walk. So he can, I mean, you know, now he can. Mm. Uh, yeah, so please tell me, um, he can't talk after the stroke, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's been a month. Uh, mm. Will he be able to talk again? Well, it's difficult to answer whether he'll be able to talk again, but what I can mm. advise is that a speech therapist or mm. a language therapist yeah. is really key to this recovery. Mm. Because, you know, the neuro-linguistic programming yes. is exactly what they will do. Because what I'm seeing and what I'm picking up from that question is that he couldn't eat and he couldn't walk on his own and uh, then he recovered, mm. was able to walk on his own and eat. Absolutely. Because the hope yeah. is that yeah. then, because he can't talk right now, yeah. that he might be able to. You know, Very good. If I could just maybe finally say that mm. the brain is an amazing organ. Mm. Mm. It can reconstitute itself mm. and mm. find new pathways. Mm. So people must just not give up. Before we let you go. That's a very interesting shirt colour you've got the on. I love the I love that there's a story Thank behind you. it and <laughs> you want to share it with South Africa. Yes, yes. I want to be a good brand ambassador. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we always associate red with the heart. Yes. Um, for stroke globally and obviously in South Africa too, yeah. lime green is the colour of stroke. Oh. So I thought I would the part. Uh, you know <laughs> you what? Stunning. It's beautiful Thank and I you. think everyone will note this wherever you see this shirt today. Just sort of salute the person <laughs> being an aware person. G-Men, what have you got for us that side? 
Oh, thank you so much to the Professor. We're going to continue exactly on that same vein now, continuing with our health discussion on strokes as we observe World Stroke Day this week. And we've got Lutfia Vayaj, Executive for Marketing and Communication, but also a wife of a stroke survivor, her husband, Ishmael. Now she joins us to share their personal uh, journey together. And I think a stroke not only affects the survivor, but obviously it's known to have a significant impact on the entire family, especially a partner. Lutfia talks to us about what it has been like to care for a loved one after a stroke. Lutfia, welcome. Thank Hi, you so thank much for joining you. us. Thanks, Jim. Um, it's difficult to know where to begin because I can't escape thinking about how difficult this journey must have been. Mm -hmm. Terrifying at times, especially in that moment. Two strokes then adds a whole different level of, of trauma to that, both physical and emotional. Were you with him when the first stroke happened? No, actually on both occasions, uh, he was on his own. Oh, wow. But the first time he was out um, driving and um, he never came home the afternoon. Um, and we kind of wondered what happened to him, searched around, phoned around. And at past six the evening, he phoned to say he's in the hospital. And we rushed to the hospital and they told us that he had a mild stroke. A at mild the stroke, yeah. okay. Yeah. So then we fast forward we to fast a second forward stroke. Four months later, during that time, he had rehabilitation, um, and because it was a mild stroke, um, he could easily uh, go for therapy, and the therapy kicked in quite well. And four months later, he was at home by himself, and he suffered another stroke. Phoned his brother, said, "Look, I'm not feeling good. I think I need to get to a hospital." Got to the hospital. I got there, they prepared him for a scan, for a, a, yeah, they had to do a scan, and during that time, what they call an extended stroke, and that was the big one. And when he came out, um, he ended up in ICU with no speech, not able to walk, not able to do anything for himself. And that was seven years ago. Seven years ago. Um I can only connect with you on an emotional level because I'm thinking yeah. about what it would be like to go through that process, yeah. but then every one of your worst fears coming to bear. I know. Uh, where are we now? How much of the physical knock-on effect are you still feeling, and, and what has that journey of rehabilitation okay. been like? So he started off by spending three months at the Stroke and Rehabilitation Centre, which is associated with the hospital. And during that time, he had physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech and language therapy, and after three three months he was discharged and he came home and that was a massive adjustment as you can imagine because we had to get used to having him around and also to accommodate his needs and obviously he had to get used to being a different him in at home so that was a very big challenge and um, he is in a wheelchair he now has a full-time carer um, at home who lives with us and um, he's not able to He's lost his speech, he's locked in. But he hasn't lost his mental faculties, so he's still very much with us. But he's just not able to talk. And um, about five years ago, uh, for five years, he wasn't able to, to eat. So we fed him through a tube in his stomach, okay? And as I said, he's still in a wheelchair. And he gets physio at home, he gets occupational therapy at home and speech and language therapy. And so there has been improvement physically. He's able to, get, to take a couple of steps. He's able to help mm. himself a little bit, okay? Like hold a spoon to try to feed himself. He's able to use the remote control of the TV. <laughs> so he spends a lot of time. I, and that might sound like a, a, a small thing, but I, I, having dealt with a lot of people in this, this neuroscience space, yeah. it's a massive thing because it suddenly opens a gateway into a, a whole nother world. Completely. And look, the first thing that we had to do was to try to understand what a stroke is, what, what's going on here, because it's a huge knock, you know, for the family, for the children. How did you manage that transition? Because as you say, he is still the same man. Yeah. So much has changed, yeah. but locked <laughs> inside that, that physical yeah. experience of this is the same man mentally. How have you been able to support him, what did you say to him? How did you, to, uh, were you able to connect with him initially? What was that part of this transition? Well, about? you know, the fact that he could understand what we were saying, he, uh, you know, he could hear, and we created, well, I created little boards with words on it and alphabet on it to help him to try to understand. And at the time when he was in hospital, he couldn't use both arms, so he used his feet. 
and he would tap on the, uh, the letters of the alphabet on the words and that's how we started to communicate. When he came home and with physio he's able to, to point a finger so we kind of hold words the, 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 the board with the alphabet and he points to it and we have an app uh, that he uses so he's able to type out a couple of words and the app repeats what he says okay but you know after seven years we we understand an eye movement That's we understand we, yeah. uh, we understand a, a head movement a nod and it's amazing how we communicate we can have full-on speeches and we communicate but you have to understand what he's going through it's also it, it also goes with a lot of respect because imagine graham being locked in for seven years and not able to say things. I can't. <laughs> but it takes a lot of bravery. It takes a tremendous amount of courage. And if you see his determination uh, to keep on keeping on, it inspires you as the carer, as the family, to assist him. So. Are you angry? Do you feel blessed to still have him here with yeah. you? How have you been able to, to wrap your own head around yeah. what's, what's happened? Because it's happened to you as much yeah. as it's yeah. happened to him. This is a shame. The experience. first year wasn't easy at all because, you know, when people go to hospital, they either go to get very, very they go to get better and they come home or they go and unfortunately they pass away. Okay. He went in for three months, he came out and that's it. All right. So you have to kind of cope with that. So you kind of want to, so when is this going to end? All right, when, when is it, how many more months to go? It's yeah, just when, that when kind of thing. Snap back, yeah. And so with education and talking to people and finding out about it, you realize that every single person is different. They cope differently, the experience has been different, the impact of the stroke has been very different. And so the first year was a massive emotional roller coaster. But we actually, believe that this is a blessing for us okay it really is because we've learned so much about each other as a, about a family unit and about our own strength you know just how deep that that reservoir is yeah. you mentioned the word cope maybe we can leave families partners mm -hmm. and maybe even those that are, are suffering from yeah a stroke and dealing with exactly what you've had to deal with what were those coping mechanisms how have you as a family been able to deal with what you've gone through because this is something yeah quite intense and well just to get through one day at a time firstly because at the when it happened the thought of what's going to happen in two months time or two weeks time that was just too much so we just got through one day at a time and we still do because we still have wobblies and hiccups along the way and we see through the day all right and uh, also coping with talking about it okay being open and not sitting and stressing over things you know just talk about it coping by by reading about it by informing yourself about it by um, you, you know just trying to to understand what the person is going through um, yeah so there's various coping mechanisms in place you know you've got to just dig deep just take it step yeah. by step so one day at a time um, well thank you for being brave enough to to open this conversation up on this platform yeah. because i know there are a lot of uh, judging by the numbers that i've been presented yeah. with today mm -hmm. there are so many people going through yeah. what you are going through right now so yeah. thank you for sharing this please pass our best on to ishmael as well thank and you. the rest Thanks, of your Kate. family uh, for being brave enough to to share what must have been a very very difficult but it sounds yeah. like also inspirational yeah. journey so um, i really appreciate your time. Thank you. I've taken a huge amount from this and hopefully this adds new relevance to you at home about why it's so important for us to raise awareness around strokes and staying as healthy as we possibly can but just knowing those warning signs and what to do if we do go through this. You're not alone and certainly if you're suffering from a stroke you are not alone. There is support and help out there and hopefully this has helped to educate you in just a little way. Looking for fantastic health and weight loss benefits without a lifestyle change or being on a diet? Well, ShapeLine 50 Billion from Proven Probiotics is the first ever probiotic to offer scientifically proven weight loss, while at the same time boosting immune and digestive health. That's why we think ShapeLine 50 Billion may well be the world's most effective probiotic. Available at Discam and Clicks.
still celebrating their 80th birthday and as part of the festivities, they're giving you a chance to win your share of 1 million rands in prizes. Oh yes, that's correct. Grocery hampers and vouchers are up for mm. grabs daily, while stylish luxury Le Creuset pot sets can be yours weekly. And the grand prize? A stunning kitchen makeover. Ooh. And to enter is really simple. Buy any two cool products. Dial star 120 star 1987 hash and follow the prompts. And remember, keep your tail slip as proof to qualify for your awesome prize. Competition ends 13 November 2020. T's and C's do apply. Coup is the best you can do. It's my feel good breakfast show. Yes, it is your Feel Good Breakfast show. It is Expresso live on SABC3. Time to bring it back to the kitchen. Uh, and the question is, if you're looking to spice up your breakfast game, do you know who to turn to? Well, if you're looking to spice up your kitchen game uh, with something as nutritious as well as delicious, Teresa Alliate has a healthy breakfast, brunch or lunch idea just for you. It's packed with protein, yes, tick, <laughs> and a good dose of your daily greens, tick. And this to uh, toasted sourdough recipe is definitely going to help hit the spot. Oh yes. My friend Teresa. Hello. So good to see you again. Yes, I nice missed you last week. I know, missed I missed you. you too. It was about time we cooked together. Hey. Yes, it is about time. <laughs> so Teresa, I like that every time you come up here with these recipes now, you are being very conscious and mindful of the fact that the seasons are changing. Yes, We're starting yes. to see greens mm -hmm. really make a strong feature. That's right. We're being Summer more food, conscious. lighter yeah. food, and mm -hmm. lots of veggies, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are you making for us this morning? Okay, so we're making this beautiful open sandwich. Mm -hmm. I've got some olive oil in the pan. I'm going to fry up some green beans. Mm -hmm. Lots of green happening today, which is great. We love that. And we're going to be using sourdough bread, which is very good for you because it's more easily digested. Yes, yes, so, that's great. Which it's a you nice want. Option. Which yes. you want. It's a really good Absolutely. choice uh, of yeah. bread. What other ingredients do you have there? Okay, so I've added some monge too. Mm -hmm more greenery and then a little bit of salt and pepper mm -hmm. and you're just going to fry this off very quickly you know, what the thing is, a lot of people do often struggle to bring uh, flavor and that savory sort of uh, uh, explosion uh, uh, into like greens. What is your yeah. advice? Uh, the salt and pepper, is that like the standard? And if you want to play with a bit of spices, you could or play herbs? with spices, lemon juice as well is great. We're going to be finishing oh. our sandwich off with lemon. Love that. Uh, but salt and pepper, a bit of oil is actually perfect. Stunning. Garlic Stunning. is also an option if you, if you like that. Yeah. Would you like to prepare our, our bread so long? Yes. 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 So uh, what we've, so we've got done, some hummus here. Hummus, right? yes. Mm. And we've toasted our sourdoughs. We've got some lovely crunch. Oh yes. So you can just you spread that nice thick layer. You we actually wanna, do want to be very generous. You want to be when generous. You do hummus, yeah. You want to actually just like <laughs> stack it on there. I'm actually going to bring that oh, on here. It's so oh. delicious and it's got protein mm. in it, so it's lovely. You want to make sure that every corner of the bread that oh, you're yes. having, uh, you are arriving <laughs> onto some hummus there. Edge right? to edge. You don't want to have any any dry bits. Basically, <laughs> so, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm plastic. Stirring, That's uh, good. Uh, the hummus on here. <laughs> Almost like when you make Lovely. cupcakes yeah. uh, with the icing. That's uh, hummus to bread. Same kind of idea. Uh, but hummus is also good because of the protein element. Yes, absolutely. And we've got protein in the tuna as well. And oh, then obviously fiber great. from our, our vegetables. Mm -hmm. So it's a lovely dish. So basically there's like a, the Jimmer's choice. This is the Jimmer's <laughs> alternative. <laughs> Ah, look at that going I'm just on gonna there. That. And if you don't want to use tuna, you could use mm. something like chicken. Yeah. Or you could do a vegetarian version. You could I use love how quick and easy it is as well. You know, during the day, it's always, always busy and mm. you want a nice quick lunch, but something that's mm -hmm. substantial yes. and filling. It looks good too. And healthy. Yeah. I think the one thing that I'm going to be stressing throughout the summer is people really do eat with their eyes. So when a yes. meal is presented yes. in this way, even if it's just two colors, the green and this sort of beigey color that you're getting from the hummus, you want it to still Beautiful. look really, really good. I mean, this yeah. looks like restaurant grade it's stuff. Stunning. This is restaurant grade material we're talking about here. Yeah. But the only way to know if it tastes like restaurant or hotel grade <laughs> is to taste it, right? Yes. So uh, we finished it off with some microgreens. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have one of these lemon here. Lemon juice. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh, absolutely delicious. Mm. Please Lots dig in. Dig in. <laughs> mm. And the magic so is good. in the crunch, but oh, all the flavors. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm. It really works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you do that. I'll pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. 
come through, G. Okay, he was just okay. having the time of his life, chatting up a storm. Um, oh, Lutfia, what an incredible journey and mm. story. Just, you know, seven years dealing with someone in that, that scenario and, and the successes and the failures mm. and how to wrap your head around it. Just um, hugely insightful. So thank you so much to our panel, everyone who's come through today um, to help us promote stroke awareness. And hopefully you have garnered some absolute gems from that. But um, now an opportunity to throw forward to an exciting <laughs> night because lest we forget, yes. it's a Tuesday, baby. Yes. Now make sure that you catch tonight's episode of The Insider essay at 7.30 on SABC3. This week, they're exploring artistic expression mm. with some incredible guests. Truly exciting stuff. Yeah, an awesome lineup. They'll be sharing this exclusive one-year anniversary with none other than Sumizi and Mokhale at the luxurious, and it would be luxurious if Soms <laughs> is involved, um, at a beautiful uh, nature getaway. Mm. Yes, now they also check out the incredible collaboration between fashion designer David Tale and nice. artist Jean John Duplessis, they also visit the beautifully designed award-winning restaurants of top chef David Higgs. What a powerhouse lineup. <laughs> All of that and more in the Insider Essay. And that's tonight at 7.30 with a repeat on a Saturday night at 8. And of course, you can catch it all right here on 3. Are you excited, Uncle Tabsy? Mm -hmm. What is it? What are you, what are you eating? Mm -hmm. what are you eating? <laughs> nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Join us tonight at 7.30 on SABC3 as Sumizi and Mahale celebrate their first year anniversary in luxury safari style. Ah, that's so nice! Top chef David Higgs invites us into his home and shows us his favorite meal. And designer David Clale and artist Jean Duplessis create artistic magic. That's the Insider Essay, tonight at 7.30, only on SABC3. I literally have to social distance because Please. you've heard about the second wave, guys. Yeah. Well, we, we should all be, be maintaining social distancing in our masks when we're out in public. Yeah. And um, if you're feeling symptoms, getting yourself tested. But Dr. Emil Reed, who himself has been through the COVID experience, is going yeah. to be joining us for our midday show at 11.30 this morning. We're also going to chat to Carl Weber. Um, him and his partner, they lost a parent through COVID. Oh. So um, a stark reality of us still being gripped in the pandemic. We'll see you at 11.30. But we love you. Never forget it. Mwah. Clover celebrates spring with exciting giveaways. Look out for selected Clover products in store to stand a chance to win. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.